We finally have an object in the sky that's been imaged by the current big three space telescopes. That's Hubble, Euclid, and JWST. And what an incredible image this is. It's the Horsehead Nebula, a pretty well-known and distinctive object in the Orion constellation. This is the first time we have a common object that's been imaged and released by all three of these telescopes. So we can finally see how these three giants of astronomy actually compare. Okay, just to set your expectations correctly, JWST hasn't imaged the whole horse, but rather just the very top of it. That's one of the key differences between JWST and Euclid, the ability to image large areas at once. But we'll get to all of that after we have a proper look at the images. The Horsehead Nebula is a distinctive cloud of space dust and space gas that happens to make the shape of well, a horse head. It's about 1,300 light years away, so still well within our Milky Way galaxy. Here, we can zoom into the Orion constellation where it lives, past the famous belt of Orion and towards the horse head itself. We pass through several different images of the nebula as we do so, and here we reach the image taken by the Euclid Space Telescope. This is a really wide shot of the nebula, and the most impressive thing about it is how fast Euclid took it. The image was taken in just about an hour, and this is a single field of view from Euclid, which is much, much wider than both Hubble and JWST, meaning it can image large patches of the sky incredibly quickly. This image is a combination of visible and infrared light, and it's also got stunning resolution and is absolutely beautiful. If we keep zooming in, we can see the Hubble image of the Horsehead 2, initially released in 2013 to celebrate the telescope's 23rd anniversary. So Hubble has been imaging space for a long time. First of all, this image is a lot smaller than the Euclid one, because the Hubble field of view is a lot smaller. The image here isn't even a single field of view, but it's actually a combination of nine separate images hopefully giving you some idea of the difference in surveying power between Euclid and, well, everything else for now. The Hubble image is still very beautiful, though. And actually, the Hubble team have created this awesome 3D render of the image, too. Now, this is a computer render that is reasonably but not fully accurate, as we can't image space objects like this in 3D. So we're taking the 2D image and we're sort of doing our best guess of what it would look like in 3D. I still think it gives a really beautiful sense of the textures, the 3D-ness of the nebula, and how large everything here really is. Heading deeper still, we finally get to the JWST image that captures just the very top of the horse of the main, along with some beautiful background. This is the highest resolution, sharpest infrared image of the Horsehead Nebula ever taken, and captures the complexity of the gas in unprecedented resolution, revealing fine and subtle structures and striations in the gas that we've never seen before. The nebula formed from a collapsing cloud of interstellar material, and it glows like this thanks to light and radiation from a nearby hot star. We think that the horsehead will survive for about 5 million more years before it disintegrates in this hot radiation, so I'll say enjoy the view while you can. The incredible image from JWST really shows off the intricate structures in the gas of the horsehead. The beautiful textures really pop, and of course we can see so many galaxies in the background of the image. To be honest, that's probably the most stunning part of it for me. The colours and shapes of these background galaxies, each containing billions of stars, planets, and likely nebulae in the shapes of all sorts of animals and their heads. This particular portion of the Horsehead Nebula is about 0.8 light years across. That might sound like a small amount, but it's still an inconceivably large distance. Currently, the spacecraft Voyager 1 is the most distant human-made object from the Earth, and it's a mammoth 23.4 billion kilometers away from us now. Now that sounds like a lot. A long way, but nowhere near a light year. 23 billion kilometers is about 0.002 light years. So Voyager 1, since its launch in 1977, has traveled just 0.3% of the size of this image. That is absolutely mind-blowing. 
JWST has actually taken images of the horse head in both near-infrared and mid-infrared light. This used NERCAM and MIRI respectively, that's the near-infrared camera and the mid-infrared instrument on board the telescope. In the bluer mid-infrared image, the reds of the distant galaxies pop much more, and we can peer deeper into the gas of the nebula itself. While in the near-infrared image, the stars and galaxies are all much brighter. We see many of the younger stars peep through the ethereal blue clouds, but we lose a little bit of penetrative power through the dust and gas. I should say that the JWST images are again one field of view from the telescope. You can see the footprints of what they can see here overlaid on just a portion of the Euclid image. This again shows us how different these telescopes are and that they're built to do different things. One is for surveying large areas of sky and the others are for zooming in and taking really detailed shots. The four black boxes here make up one NERCAM field of view, so it images all of those at the same time, and the two green boxes show MIRI's footprint for different filters used here. I can also show you the fields of views of these telescopes here side by side, so we can see the instruments of JWST alongside Hubble's camera and the massive Euclid footprint. In the near future, the teams involved in this work will have access to spectroscopic data of the nebula. This is being taken with the Integral Field Unit, using MIRI and the near-infrared spectrograph, NERSPEC. The footprint of that is also visible in the graphic I just showed you. It's the yellow rectangle near the center, so still very small for JWST. Let's now zoom out a little bit and look at all of those images together. This is how they all compare, in size and in detail. They vary wildly in the size of the image and the resolution of the image, but each telescope teaches us something new about the region. I'll leave a few links in the description of the video in case you want to read more about any of the things we've talked about here. And in exchange, you can leave me any questions you have about the images and the horse head down below too. I would love to hear your thoughts on which one you prefer. Is it the wider views from the Euclid Space Telescope? the zoomed in and incredibly detailed shot from JWST, or maybe something a little bit in the middle from Hubble. Thanks a lot for watching this video with me, and if you made it this far, I'd love it if you'd consider hitting that subscribe button too. It's free for you, and it really helps me out an absolute ton. Until next time, stay safe team, I'll see you soon. Bye!